Serious question. Have you ever wanted to see Tom Hardy shooting a Tommy gun while wearing a diaper and eating a carrot at the same time? If so, this might just be the movie for you. The only thing that really matters is how a man treats his family. Now, I'm not even saying this ironically. Capone has been one of my most anticipated films of like the past three years. And I can already hear you in the back going like, well, why Capone and not something like a new Avengers movie or new Star Wars or, or Grown Ups 3? And, and to the third one there, I, you would have a point because that will be a great film. But my anticipation for Capone really boils down to two words. Josh Trank. Well, let's cue the context, shall we? Trank began his career with a popular Star Wars themed YouTube video, which became a viral sensation overnight. From here, Trank got a bunch of other work in directing and editing, until he eventually got to helm his directorial debut in the form of Chronicle, a film that I think is one, if not the, best found footage movie of that entire genre. Granted, not exactly a high standard or anything, but still worth noting. You know, it battled it out with Unfriended Dark Web, and <laughs> it came on top. Dude, this is Dark Web. What's Dark Web? Since Chronicle was like a huge financial and critical success, Trank immediately got a bunch of other work. He got offered a Shadow of the Colossus movie and a Venom movie, which if you see Capone, I don't know if Tom Hardy would have been that much different in, the, in Trank's Venom movie, but still would have been interesting to see nonetheless. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Instead of choosing a Venom movie or a Shadow of the Colossus, Trank decided to do a Fantastic Four film. The film, later titled Fant Four Stick, was plagued with studio interference and ultimately led to a complete disaster, both financially and especially critically. And the awful title is like the shit cherry on the top of like a shit sundae to, to keep it frank. The Fantastic Four are my favorite Marvel team so seeing this film and having like the anticipation that this was from the director of Chronicle broke just about every part of my heart. The only fantastic thing about it is how it managed to be worse than the Tim Story movies. Better than the Roger Corman one though. It, Trank, I'll give you credit where it's due. But even though that film really broke every part of me, I chucked most of that up to studio interference and I didn't blame Trank too much. Like, he's definitely at fault for most of it, but I still believe there was a lot of potential there. I was still holding out hope for my boy, you know? I, I just knew that one day he was gonna make something special. And that day has come with his film, Capone. Capone stars Tom Hardy, Linda Caradelli. Oh, <laughs> Capone stars Tom Hardy, Caradella. Capone stars Tom Hardy, Caradella. I guess I'm beefing with Cara Delevingne today. I, I don't know what's going on. Linda Cardellini. I'm. That's not even a hard name to say. I just keep saying like Caradella, whatever the. <laughs> While originally planned for a theatrical release, Capone went straight to VOD because of obvious circumstances, but it's supposedly done pretty well for being released digitally. However, despite the, the financial possibly success, it hasn't been the best received film. It's sitting at around a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes. And the most crushing part is that on IMDb, as of recording this, it's only 0.1 above Gotti. Now, I know Gotti's a masterpiece. I'm not trying to shit on Gotti. But if we're taking our irony caps off for a second, like, that's just depressing. <laughs> Regardless of the mixed reception this film's gotten, I couldn't be happier with the product. I feel like Trank has crafted this bizarre, like, weird, which is a synonym for bizarre, I don't know why I said that, but it's a really fascinating experience. Do I understand why this has such poor reception from audiences? Absolutely. Because I feel like a lot of audiences are walking into this movie expecting a typical gang Al Capone movie, and that's really not what you get. So one of the things I appreciate the most about this film is the exploration of Al Capone. And this is kind of what a lot of people dislike about the movie because I've seen a lot of reviews saying that it's very narrow, there isn't much to the characterization of Al Capone, he's mostly just shitting the bed and <laughs> doing weird shit. 
this is really more of a character study of this really violent, terrible person in his last year of his life when he's suffering from this dementia. What Trank does is he, he kind of creates this narrative of giving Al Capone this sense of guilt almost for all of the terrible things he's done. Like we see him go through these various hallucinations which are like flashbacks of previous events in his life. It's really fascinating to see like this really powerful mob king in this awful, <laughs> terrible place in his life. But at the same time, that approach is also kind of one of my problems with the movie. I'm a little conflicted as to why Trank decided to take this approach. Like, it's definitely an interesting look and refreshing for an Al Capone movie, but seeing Capone, like, shitting the bed and just being, like, wacky, I don't know if he's trying to say, like, oh, terrible people get what they deserve in the long run. And if he is making that point, then you're, you're showing his family, like, reacting to this and being really upset about um, him being in this place. So I'm a little confused as to why you would try to almost make light of him suffering and causing his family all this pain. I guess I find that a little conflicting, but as a whole, I still find this approach really interesting and definitely refreshing, if anything. Now, take that characterization and add on top Tom Hardy's wacky ass performance, which I had described to my friends as like mixing Donald Duck. So you have like a Stay with me here. <laughs> like mixing a Donald Duck with like Happy Gilmore, like, Oi, keep your shit, the hair silky and smooth. So you mix those two together and you have like, I'll never do it again, I'm sorry. It almost enhanced the experience because it was so weird. And on top of like the strange characterization they give them, I found it to be a really interesting approach and it made me laugh a lot. I don't know if it was supposed to, but it definitely did. And just adding on top of the weird characterization, the weird performance, you have all the weird shit that he does in the movie. Like you have him shooting alligators with a shotgun, which is one of the more normal things in the movie. You have him singing Wizard of Oz in front of the projector. Like, <laughs> I never could have expected that in a million years. And of course you have two scenes where Tom Hardy shits his pants, which I don't know why we needed to see that in graphic detail, but we did. So me describing this movie to you may make you immediately tune out and be like, this is not for me. Done. And if that's the case, it's not for you because I don't know who this is for. I think it's just for weird people like me who enjoy seeing filmmakers take crazy risks, not all of them paying off, but still being a fascinating experience regardless, which to me is the best kind of film you could find. On top of all of this craziness, you have all of these articulate choices made as far as like editing and cinematography that make the whole experience feel much more complete. And I've seen people complaining like, oh, the editing's really quick. It's really kind of uh, weird in some parts and it's disorienting, but that's intentional, man. Like <laughs> that's the point Trank's trying to make. He's trying to put you in the mind of Al Capone in this mental state where he's just losing his mind. And there will be scenes where Al Capone is hallucinating and you don't really know if the scene he's in is real. You don't even know if the person he's talking to is real. There are a bunch of scenes like that and I've seen people say like, oh, well the film's so confusing, I just didn't get it. That's the point. Al Capone had serious dementia. Like he was losing his mind. So Trank is putting you in the mind of Al Capone, which is a really interesting experiment that I loved about this film. Practically, the film is just really well made and any choices that seem a little disorienting or a little weird, they're all intentional and I feel like they only enhance the film in the long run. I guess another qualm I would have is that the supporting characters aren't really that interesting to me. Clearly the film's called Capone, so that's the, that's the main star right there and he's done excellently in my opinion. Linda Cardellini, she's 
necessary in the film. She's one of the supporting characters that I really liked because it's important to see this his family and how they are reacting to him and how they are struggling and coming to terms with how he's losing his mind and he probably doesn't have much time left. So I get having them in the film, but there's a whole side plot of him stashing away like $10 million. That whole thing felt kind of rushed and it didn't really go anywhere. But at the same time, since this is coming from the mind of Al Capone, maybe it's supposed to feel that way. Maybe you're not, maybe you're just supposed to be left kind of empty and not really sure what happened to that. Maybe I'm giving too many passes. I don't know. So regardless of a few problems I have, such as some of the supporting characters not really being too interesting and the overall intentions that Trank has in making this film, I still found this to be a very interesting and riveting film. And if you are interested in cinema, I hate to sound pretentious, <laughs> but if you are interested in watching new ideas, original films, this is definitely something to check out, even if you hate it. I think it makes for an interesting viewing experience. This film has definitely reaffirmed to me that Trank is one of the most interesting filmmakers out there, and I really hope this film gets him more work in the future. His original ideas are so different, and I really want to see what else Trank has up his sleeves. I saw on Twitter that he was hinting at some horror movie. It might have been a joke, but I would love to see that. Even though Fantastic Four, in a sense, was kind of a horror movie to me, like, that shit was terrifying.